Well, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects in the world, and that's Waylon Jennings. Mm, he's one of my favorite subjects, too. I mean, a fascinating guy. When I was in maybe ninth grade, I had the pleasure of, he had just written an autobiography. So I drove to North Birmingham at a bookstore that he was in and got an autographed copy of the book. And I can remember just, I saw the Shooter 5 bus out front. Yeah. And going in there and seeing him. And, you know, I know that he was a famous guy, but when you're around Waylon, you just feel something. You know what? I, I, that never did leave after I got to know him. He always remained bigger than life to yeah. me. And, and kind of rarely because so many other artists don't. But he really had a thing about him. That he was a very special friend. But Waylon contacted you, I guess, somewhere in the mid-'80s um, yeah. and kind of asked you to help him with something that's a pretty important moment because a lot of people don't have artists that call them and say, I just need your help for the whole album. Mm, yeah. And I wonder if you'll talk a little bit about this album. We might have it up on screen right now. Oh, a Man yeah. Called Hoss. Yeah, yeah. Very special memories there. Um, well, it was before Christmas one year. And I can't remember the year, actually, but he, he called me to come down to his office. So I took my brother-in-law, who was a kind of a, a amateur photographer, so we could get some pictures and a proof that I had been there. <laughs> and I took my father-in-law with me just to let him meet Waylon. And we went down, and I met with him, and his office looked just like you would think Waylon Jennings' office would look. There was a lot of black velvet and leather, and his girl that had been with him forever, uh, his right-hand lady there that worked for him in his office, she decorated his office, and it was it was beautiful. It was uh, very Waylon-esque. And so we were sitting in there, um, and yeah, he, he, he said— Unbeknownst to me, he had been listening to some of my demos, and he loved the way I phrase songs when I sang. And um, he had actually cut two or three of my things through the year, through the years. And um, so that's what got him interested in me. To so he said, I, "I've been wanting to write a, an autobiography about my life before." I die and someone gets it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd love for you to write it with me, is what he said. And I said, man, I'd, that, that would be amazing. And, of course, I was just getting to know him, and I didn't know if this was going to come through or not. But um, So we had our meeting, and it went amazingly well, and I was just on cloud 40, and um, and then we got to thinking about doing the album, and being a Christian, I was a little concerned about how we'd handle the drug days, mm -hmm. and um, so it's funny, a little side note here, Tom Collins was my publisher at the time. Tom was just an amazing uh, producer, publisher. But uh, so he was, he was always interested in making every penny he could. He was a very, very good businessman. Taught me a lot, really. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I was telling him I was having a little concern about that. And Tom said, hey, man, we'll work it out. Don't worry about it. And <laughs> it was all about making the money to Tom. So anyhow, I talked to Waylon about it. And he's, he made me a promise that he never backed down on me. He said, Hoss, when we write a song, if we're not both happy with it, we won't put it out. And that was my assurance that I didn't have to worry about what, how we handle things because he, he was going to let me have some uh, limitations about how we'd approach different subjects. And he, he was just amazing like that. He was, an, he was a killer friend if you if Waylon was your friend boy you could count on him his word was his bond he really was 
We need more people like that in the world these oh, days. Oh, yeah, man. But, you know, Whalen was also very stubborn. <laughs> and that worked for him in, in a lot of ways in his music. And, boy, it worked against him, too, because there are many amazing things Waylon could have done had he not been stubborn. But he it was Waylon's way or the highway, but he, he, he wanted it his way. Well, stubbornness is kind of what drove the outlaw era yeah, to come into existence. Yeah, it did. It did. Thanks for watching this clip of Country Drive. To see more in the future, please hit like and subscribe.